She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We really are so blessed that you decided to join us today. I'm excited about what we're gonna talk about today because you might have the chance of getting a raise just based on what we're gonna talk about. Perhaps you're listening to this on your way to work or you're watching the show on your way uh, as you're getting ready for work. You have a chance of getting a raise today. And if you own a business, oh my goodness, this is gonna bring so much clarity to you on who you should be promoting. And also it's going to show you why you have some of the frustrations that you do with some of the people you're working with and really what are they costing you? Benjamin Franklin, man, I'm telling you, it seems like he's living today <laughs> because his quotes are so alive even today. I mean, he's so evergreen. He's been dead for a really long time. Very successful man back in the day. But I'm telling you, his words are still alive and are completely applicable to us right this minute. He says this, your net worth to the world is usually determined by what remains after your bad habits are subtracted from your good ones. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a doozy, isn't it? It's so true. Think about it. People actually re remember our bad habits. And sometimes our bad habits are such liabilities that actually hurts us desperately and can even cost us our job. I know after 27 years of being in business, also raising five children, and I've got seven grandchildren today, I've worked with a lot of people, hundreds of thousands from all over the world. And I can tell you that most people are completely oblivious to what their bad habits are. And many people have been fired and they don't know why. Oh, they've been talked to and they've been warned, but they still think it's the boss's fault or it's because of this, you know, so they didn't like me, that's why. And yet, even though the conversations have been had, they still did not see the writing on the wall. R right now, I'm in the midst of doing a bunch of evaluations inside of our company. I've been running companies for a really long time. And it's important to get together with your staff individually, in some, in some cases, small groups and others one-on-one, -on -one, depending on which department and what, what level of uh, leadership they're in. And I, what I found is to be very, very interesting. Some have no idea what their strengths are. Others have no idea what their weaknesses are. And some have no idea what their improvements are. The, the most costly thing that could cost you your job is not having a vision for your job. That's one that I found a long time ago, uh, interviewing somebody in a very important role and asking, so what's your vision for your job? And there was, uh, wow, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Like. Ooh. So if a leader does not have a vision for their job, certainly that leader is not leading somebody else to have a vision in theirs. Not to mention the same question, like, so where do you see yourself five years from now? And the answer was, well, uh, you know, I really haven't thought about that. I'll have to get back to you. This exposes something. You see, wherever there is no vision and no definiteness of purpose, and by the way, who defines the purpose? You define the purpose for your job. You define where you're gonna be five years from now. But Danny, I'm in a job that, you know, it doesn't really align with where I wanna go. Oh, that's what you think. But see, here's what I know. In the experience of 27 years of being in business and working with hundreds of thousands around the world, and let's go ahead and add in the most important element, and that is that I walk with the most high high God, what I know about walking with the most high God is he is my boss. He is your boss. Number one. Number two is that there is nothing that you will ever do in serving him in your work life, your daily job life, whether you work at a grocery store, my favorite one, H-E-B, or you are a mechanic or a contractor, or you do video, you do audio, you're a writer, you're, you're a musician. It doesn't matter what your profession is, but if you love him and you're serving him and you're walking with him, now what you do is devoted to him. There's nothing you do, even if you're a garbage man, that is a waste of time. And there's skills that you're being trained with in that profession that is leading you to your destiny. So there's never a waste of time with anything that you're doing. When I look back on my past business experience and I look back on my past life experiences, disasters I've gone through, massive traumas that I've endured, deaths in the family that it just like, we're at the most horrible time of my life. Okay, all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, you know, having five children, failing in my first marriage. 
everything, my past drug history, my past, you know, alcohol addiction history, my past sex addiction history, all of those things, including being homeless 24 and a half years ago, was all by design. And it was all for preparation for what was to come. Even today, what's going on in my life today and what I have the chance to learn from today is preparation for what's to come. It's not even for today, but it's leading me to what is to come. It's forming me. It's it's challenging me. It's, it's iron sharpening me so that I'm going to get sharper as a leader or as a mother, or as a wife. So everything that you go through, is for a purpose, Every, everything. And the skills that you learn in the what you go through is for a purpose. And so you're not wasting your time with what you're doing. You are being trained for something that is to come. And so when you don't have a vision, because you think, well, I'm in a dead end job. It's not really what I wanna be doing. It's this or that, right? <laughs> You've got the wrong attitude about it, number one. And that could be one of your bad habits. One of your bad habits very likely could be that you have no vision, and you think you're in a dead end situation. The reality is you're not. And you're gonna have to stay there until you discover and learn new skills that will get you out and on to the thing that you think that you actually want to do. So we're gonna be going to the phones and I want you to look at yourself right now. This is so hugely important and this will aid in you getting a raise at some point, whether it's tomorrow, next week, next month, or a year from now, depending of course on what your profession is. You can add more value in the marketplace when you identify these three simple things. Number one, what's the vision you have for your job? Where do you see yourself five years from now? Number two, what skills do you need to possess in order to get promoted to the next level? Not what does your boss have to do? Not what has to happen with the business. No, what skills are you lacking? What courses should you be taking? What seminars should you be attending? What books should you be reading? I recently met with somebody who said, Danny, I have a vision of being a manager over this kind of a department. And I said, great, so what books are you reading as in you are planning on becoming a manager of a department? And this one actually had an answer. I was so proud of her. She said, I'm reading this book. I'm like, and it was a management book. I'm so proud of you. So I want you to look at what classes should you be taking? What skills are you lacking to lead a team of people that are doing your current job? Okay, look at what seminars you should be attending. You have to learn, you have to increase your skill in order to get to that next level of leadership that you wanna to go to. And so, but I've asked even others who were installed into a place and they're like, oh, that would have been a good thing to do. You gotta prepare for what's to come. You can't assume that it's just gonna fall down from the heavens on top of you just because you were born or just because you are alive or just because you showed up. That's not how things work. What skills are you lacking? Where do you need to grow? What do you need to learn to be able to hit the goal that you wanna get to? Okay, next is what are my greatest strengths? Next question, what are my greatest weaknesses? Next question, what's the greatest improvement I've made in the last 12 months? Answer those questions. Evaluate yourself and discover what your habits are. Good, bad, or indifferent. Some of your habits could be good and profitable, but really identify what are some of your weaknesses that are hurting you from getting the promotion that you feel like you should get? What weaknesses do you have that are hurting your business growth? If you are in business for yourself, what habits do you have? Attitudes are habits, right? How you deal with people is a habit. Identify those weaknesses so that you can work on developing skill sets to help you get to that next place where you desire. So we're going over the phones and the question that we've asked people is this, what habits or behaviors do you know that you need to give up, that you need to walk away from, that you need to improve, that are actually hurting you from improving your life? So first we're gonna go over to Jackie Jones in LaGrange, Georgia. Jackie, welcome to the Danny Johnson Show. Hi, Danny. How are you? Very good. So what about you? What are some of the habits uh, that you need to change or have already changed that are helping you? Well, I know that, you know, we all struggle Ooh, you know, about Jackie, we cannot habits. hear you. And, there we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Perfectly now. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. But what I was saying, um, we all have bad habits. And I know some of my habits is trying to make others happy. That's one of my bad habits and uh, in the workplace. And that's one of the things that I've learned that you can never win. Yep. And um, recently I started, you know, I wanted to improve my life a little bit more. So uh, my job wanted to improve <coughs> the morale and, you know, of the team. So they gave us a book called The Energy Bus. Hmm. And it's written by John Gordon. And it's basically the 10 rules to fuel your life work and 
team with positive energy. And we all know that we work with people sometimes that, you know, just not giving off the right energy and it's mm-hmm. just you know, bringing everybody down. Mm-hmm. I know for in order for me to survive in my company, I had to bring the right energy. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure I felt great about coming to work mm-hmm. and working with the people that I work so that way, you know, my day can go smooth and everybody's day can go a little bit smoother, yeah. you know? Yep. But you can't change everybody's attitude, right? That's a reality. And so it's great that you can change your own, but we have to look at, okay, what is my response at other people's negativity? You can smile at people and some won't smile back. There are some that they're just always, they're Eeyore, right? Oh my gosh, those people drive me crazy. It's like they suck the life out of you by their just very existence. Absolutely. Right? You know what, Danny? One of, one of the rules in the book, because there's the 10 rules, but one of the rules that you just said is there will be no energy vampires allowed, Yes. you know, in your energy space, on your bus, yep. you know, meaning that those who just suck just all day, just negative, mm. you just want to shut those pe- type of people out. Yep. And you're not being rude. You just want to make sure that, you know, everything is going well and and I just feel like a good when an employee has a great attitude yep. they do their their job well they do they do it they absolutely do people yeah. who have a negative outlook so I, on their job do a crappy job and those that have a positive attitude about their jobs do a phenomenal job and it's really of Wow, I control how I think, so I can determine whether or not I'm grateful and that I love my job, or I can determine whether or not I hate my job and I am negative about it and I make sure that everybody around me knows it. Well, that person's not going to end up with a job for very long. They're going to end up fired, and they're going to blame somebody else for it. They're not going to take any responsibility, and, and you know they're going to go through that cycle of never being able to keep a job because their attitude stinks. And so good, good work, Jackie. I'm proud of you that you have picked up a book that has helped you, and you've improved your attitude there and and you've found some strategies to improve how you respond to negative people and also realizing you cannot please everybody cannot that's a you're right that's a weakness being a people pleaser is a weakness people pleasers can be manipulated into doing anything even things that are not ethical even overlooking things that are unethical and that is not ethical and so it's important to be true and to know that person i can't change this is danny johnson we'll continue with more after this It may not seem like a big deal, but it might be blocking your raise. What is it? Find out next on The Danny Johnson Show. Do you dream about feeling more confident, more beautiful, more powerful, but instead you're that girl that never learned to do their makeup and now you feel lost in a sea of YouTube makeup tutorials? Or you're that new mom that can't get enough sleep at night and just wants to feel pretty again. Or the busy professional that wants to magnetize brand new clients and get more respect in the office. From the boardroom to the bedroom, xmhbeauty.com will help you. Our company has a proven track record of making beauty available on any budget, from celebrities to girls just like you and me. Our live classes, step-by-step tutorials and insider secrets will have you standing out from the crowd. Go to xmhbeauty.com forward slash Danny today to get your free gift from us. That's xmhbeauty.com forward slash D-A-N-I. It's time for a checkup from the neck up. This is the Danny Johnson Show. Oh, whatever, Danny. You know, my boss is so wrapped up in himself, he has no idea what my bad habits are. Oh, girlfriend or boyfriend, I'm telling you right now, you are two seconds away from losing your job. You really have got to look at your bad habits to see if it is hurting you from your earning potential. See if it's hurting you from you reaching your destiny. Friend, you're in control of your own choices and your own habits and your own attitude. And there are habits, perhaps, that you have that are setting you up for losing, not winning. We want to have habits that are going to help us win. That's what The Danny Show is about, right? We're about helping to set you up for success, true success, not the status quo success. That status quo success is a bunch of nonsense, hogwash, and it's broke as the Joneses are broke. We're talking real success, and which is why every day we redefine the status quo. 
and we set a new bar for what real success is. It's not about stuff. It's not about having it all. It is about defining it for you personally, according to you, who you are as a person, your character, where you want to go, the desires that are inside of your heart, there's a destiny that's calling out of you, and you've got to answer that calling. Every day, you got to answer that calling. And so today, we're talking about our performance at work, and if our habits are hindering us from getting promoted, if our ha habits are hindering us from being who we're supposed to be, influencing people the way that we should be influencing them. So we have some people on hold right now. People are ready to contribute into the program today about what they've done or habits they've discovered that they have that are bad that are hurting them from success. So Gary Miller from Tennessee, welcome to the show. Hey, sister, how are you? Oh, awesome. <laughs> so what about you? What are some of those bad habits that you're working on? Well, um, actually, mm. I uh, uh, when I uh, read that question, I was... Uh, taken back into my trucking career. Mm -hmm. I drove 32 years, all kinds of vehicles, wow. uh, mostly trucks. Um, when I first showed up on the road, you know, had the CB on and all these guys with these negative attitudes, and I started to get, you know, that cloud over my head. Like what? What would they be saying on the CB? Oh, gee. Um, well, you're a nice Christian girl, so you don't want to listen to Okay. <laughs> it was ER with the attitude, um, pretty much. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and so I decided, you know, I, I, I don't need that garbage in my cab, so I shut the radio off. Nice. And when I'd be in the truck stops, so I wouldn't talk to anyone, and I ended up isolating myself. Yep. And, um, you know, my, my work performance was, you know, it came right back up, and, you know, I did a very good job. Uh, even ended up for uh, about 18 months teaching trucking. Wow. Uh, which was a blast. Um, but, uh, you know, the, you know, Doing what you're passionate at uh, will definitely help you uh, when you get past those bad habits, and those negative attitudes. Yep. You know, for me, it was, you know, always gone, you know, sitting in freight docks, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my last job, I left it a little over a year ago. I've, I've gone into a totally different field. Um, <clears throat> my boss didn't want to see me leave. Hmm. Uh, he really didn't. He was like, man, you're the best driver we've ever had. And wow. I appreciate it, man. But, you know, I uh, I couldn't qualify for the CDL anymore medically. Mm -hmm. So you know that's what that's what happened there. Mm -hmm. um, the bad habit right now that I have is you know getting away from being a hermit and becoming that people person. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you got anything that'll help me with that, <laughs> yeah. I would be not hear it. Um, well, you know what? What I know about the mind, Gary, is that what you feed it, it will spit back out. And so right. you isolated yourself, which isolated yourself away from negativity. But what would have been better was to surround yourself with whether it's commentary or talk shows or something that was self-improving. Do you know what I mean? And then engaging with the right kind of people. It's one thing to set ourselves away from all the negative people and, and, and that are having certain kind of conversations that are just disgusting to you and they're filthy and they're not helping you to be a better person. But it's important to move forward in, in putting in what you do want to hear because you do, you create a void. And then in that void and isolation is the birthing ground for fear. It's the birthing ground for procrastination. And so I think, you know, obviously you're a listener of this show. And so this is one voice, you know, that, that, you're, that you're allowing to be poured into your life so that you can improve yourself. But you got to just put it into practice. And, and in the beginning, it's really nerve wracking. You know, so if you've been isolated and you've been a hermit, now you want to go into becoming a people person. It's like the first step, the second step, the third step, you know, that's like really, really hard to do. But pretty soon, once you get this thing going, it's like easy for you. It's absolutely easy for you. You're talking on the radio and on a television program right now. Hello, don't tell me that you're not a people person. <laughs> you know, don't tell me that you're still a hermit. Quit rehearsing the hermit tape and begin to step into that new life. Because again, what you feed your mind is gonna come out of you. And all you're doing now is feeding yourself new stuff. Stop feeding yourself the old tapes of hermit. Start feeding yourself of people person. You know, learning new communication skills, putting them into practice, getting yourself out there. I know how scary it is because I was not a people person. I was a hermit. I'm naturally a hermit. But once I put myself out there, then it gets easier every time. All right, this is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. When your life goes off the rails, Danny Johnson is there to help you get back on track. This is The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. 
Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. Treat others the way you want them to treat you. Now, come on, we heard that in Sunday school, right? Yeah, well, I didn't go to Sunday school. (laughs) My parents were doing drugs instead. We didn't do the church thing. God was a cuss word. Anyway, but I'm sure you probably went to Sunday school with a friend or something at least once. But that's a really common thing, right? It's the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated, right? Well, that was a statement not given by Zig Ziglar or some other famous speaker. That actually is a statement from the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. Important statement. It's actually a commandment. In fact, he said that that in everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is sums up the law and the prophets. Like everything that the prophets in the Bible spoke about all summed up to how you treat people. And everything that the law, 613 laws that were established uh, that God gave to Moses, those 613 laws that it was all summed up by treat others how you want them to treat you. It's honoring people, honoring their space, honoring their time, you know, uh, not being considerate of others. You know, that's all about loving and treating people correctly. And sometimes our bad habits of procrastination, being negative, This is one of my favorites, argumentative (sighs) or defensive. (sighs) Like always assuming that when something goes wrong, that it's your fault and you feel the need to defend yourself on it. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Really, it has to be their job. (sighs) These things are exasperating to coworkers and people every day are argumentative and defensive. And then when they get fired or they don't get promoted, they can't figure out what the problem is. The problem is, is that you're exasperating. If you're argumentative with people, if you're always having to prove that you're right, and if you're always defending yourself, this is hurting your value in the marketplace. It's hurting your value to your customer. It's hurting your your value to the boss. It's hurting your value to your coworkers. If you exasperate people, they don't want to pay you more. In fact, they would like to get rid of you. They really will. They would like to be done with you because working with you is so frustrating. So look at what are your bad habits. Identify them. What are your weaknesses? And if arguing and defending yourself is one of them, Dude, I'm telling you right now, this needs to be something you overcome. You need to. No, Danny, my dad was this way, so I'm this way. No, fool. You don't want what your daddy had, so you need to change. We can all change those things. I've had to change those things, right? I had to watch it with myself. Like, who? Especially, by the way, if you're married to someone that's argumentative, ah, it rubs off on you. If you're not naturally the argumentative type, but you live with people that are, you work with people that are, ah, it rubs off on you. And there you are all of a sudden defending yourself. You're having to prove that you're right and arguing with everything that comes out of somebody else's mouth. This hurts your financial position. It really does. This hurts the marriage. It hurts the kids. Some people even argue with their children and they're raising their kids to argue, not even realizing you're hurting your kid's earning potential. If you argue with your three-year-old, you argue with your four-year-old, you argue with your teenager, you are teaching them a terrible character trait and skill, a terrible skill, and you're hurting their income. You're hurting how they will provide for their future children. You are creating a scenario where you are going to be asked for money because they keep getting fired, because they can't keep a job, because they're so stinking argumentative and defensive. You frustrate people, they don't want to pay you, right? It's common sense, isn't it? Duh. So today we're identifying bad habits that cause people to get fired. Here's another one. Again, I've been running companies for 27 years, so I'm going to tell you this one. (gasps) Not following through. (sighs) Not following through. Not doing what you said you would do. Not keeping to the pattern. Not keeping the standard operating procedures. But just, you know, not following through. And if you're in a high level, somehow you made it to a high level and you don't follow through, (sighs) you're going to lose your job. Yeah, because high level people, they deal with legal things, they deal with accounting things, they deal with people things, they deal with big level decisions. And if you're sloppy, if you're sloppy at all those things, 
and you don't follow up and you don't follow through, well, get it. People follow the leadership. And uh, if you're a leader and you have somehow settled in some really bad habits of not doing the job that needs to be done and not doing the job that you've been asked to do, but instead you want to just do it your own way, you can kiss your paycheck goodbye. You can. You can. People can only live with that for so long. They just, yeah, they just can't. So, man, I'm telling you, high, high value in the marketplace is not being argumentative, but learning to communicate, learning to hear people, learning to really identify what someone is actually saying instead of assuming you know what they're saying, okay? And instead of being defensive, like get on the other person's side and, and hear them out. Don't assume the worst in people. Don't assume that someone isn't doing their job. Don't assume that someone's dropping the ball, but give them the benefit of the doubt. Again, this is that statement, treat others how you want to be treated. So do you want to be, you know, if you're the one that's always coming down on somebody else, do you want someone always coming down on you? I guarantee you, if you're always pointing out what people are doing wrong, guarantee you, you're going to have people always pointing out what you do wrong. So give people the benefit of the doubt. Get on their side. Get inside their head. Be open-minded. Learn good communication skills. Seriously, it's not that difficult to do. In fact, listen, if this is your first time listening to the show, here, I got a gift for you. First Steps to Wealth is just packed with communication skills. It's packed with strategies on how you can make yourself more valuable in your job. Um, job domination is a great pairing with this particular thing, kind of like a fine red wine with steak. You know, this and job domination together are just, oh, I'm telling you, they'll help you so much. Um, but this book, I'll give it to you for free. It's a $15 book. It's like almost 300 pages of insane content to help you become more valuable at work and pay off your debt and increase your income and reduce your stress from the poor relationships that might be surrounding you that you think everybody else is the problem, but you can learn how to solve those problems. Call our office right now, 866-760-8255. Again, that's 866, the number's on the bottom of the screen, 866-760-8255, 866-760-8255. Ask for Nate or Nellie. Uh, either one of them would be happy to serve you. Um, they are waiting for your call right now and let them know that you just heard me tell you about the book, First Steps to Wealth, and I promised it to you for free. If you pay the shipping to the, your house, you can get the physical copy of the book. You handle the f- shipping and handling, we'll send you the $15 book for free. If you uh, don't want to pay the shipping and handling, you can get the ebook. Um, absolutely download it right now and begin to read it and begin to put it into practice. There's no reason to stay stuck in a rut in your job. No reason to stay stuck in a rut in your business. There's no reason to stay stuck in a rut in any relationship. This is gonna, This is your tool to help you dig yourself out of that rut and put you on a path, a highway to success. All right, we're going to the phones. We got Kelly Gafford from Riverview, Florida. Kelly, how can we serve you today? Hi, Danny. Um, well, I had read your Facebook post and I think that I fell into all of the categories that you listed as mm-hmm. far as um, procrastination, being late, negative, I mean, the whole gamut. Wow. Um, so what happened think- from you being that way? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. What happened from you being that way? Um, well, I, I think a part of it was just age, but you know, different people I listened to along the way just to kind of improve, you know, on my business skills. Um, you know, I started changing things. I saw, <laughs> I won't go into the whole story, but I saw Dr. Phil on Oprah a long time ago mm-hmm. talking to this young uh, professional about being late, and she seriously thought that she had a problem. She's crying with tears running down her face, and she's like, you know, if I drive to work and I'm going to be on time, I'll drive around the block, and, you know, it's chronic, and it could cost me my job, and, you know, she's crying, and Dr. Phil looks at her, and he she's expecting this, you know, kind of response like, you know, that he's going to be sympathetic. And he says, that is the biggest crock I've ever heard. Yep. <laughs> it is. the most selfish thing I've ever yep. heard in my whole life. Yep. And, you know, in my profession, people are, you know, usually late, five or ten minutes. Um, I'm a hairdresser. And so, you know, they make jokes and they say, they call it hairdresser time. That's bad. And um, when I saw that show, I it kind of stopped me in my tracks. Not that I was really a late person at the time, but I really took it to heart. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so funny is when you go to tell that to people, mm-hmm. they get so defensive. Yep. You know. Yep. They do. So it just just things like that. But I think in all areas that you 
you know, that you touched on with the procrastination, with yeah. being negative, you know, when you try to tell people things, but, you know, tell them the truth, yep. um, they get really defensive. Yep. And I, I'm sure I was that person. I mean, I still struggle with all those things at some point, mm-hmm. you know, I'm yep. sure. And being defensive doesn't make anybody any more money at all. Right. Never. And it doesn't make you a trustworthy person. It doesn't make you somebody that people want to work with. I love what Dr. Phil said, that being late is being selfish, and it's true. It's absolutely true. What a different perspective, and that this one would actually purposely be late, and she thought she had some kind of mental condition for that. Uh, No, honey, you're being selfish. Get over your darn self and move the heck on. How interesting, hairdresser time. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And isn't that interesting that we can take on an identity? Well, I'm a hairdresser, so I'm late. No. That, that's ridiculous. Yeah, if you want to be a 98 percenter who ends up dead or dead broke at the age of 65, go ahead. Be like the rest of the hairdressers. But if you want to rise up above and be financially independent and being one as a leader that is leading people, well, then you got to do it the opposite way. I'm proud of you, Kelly, for stepping forward and knowing what your weaknesses were and fixing them. Really proud of you. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Do you know what your boss loves? Do you know what your boss hates? Do you know what your boss's pet peeves are? Do you even know why you should care? Danny has the answers to all of these questions coming up next. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-888-0 for Time Secrets. In your face and in your corner, you've never had a coach like this before. This is The Danny Johnson Show. You know what, Danny? Why should I be so concerned about what my boss's pet peeves are? I mean, who cares? (gasps) Man, that person with that kind of a mindset is just destined for a huge wake-up call. You're about to hit yourself, your head up against the wall again, and all you're going to do is blame the boss again. Listen to me. Your boss and your managers, even your coworkers, they all have pet peeves. They all do. Oh, my gosh, I have a list of them. (laughs) At the top, number one on my list is no (laughs) follow-through. Number two is argumentative and defensive. (laughs) These are two things that are personal pet peeves of mine. Someone doesn't follow up and follow through, and then they defend and they argue. (sighs) Like this is like double exasperation dose is what it is on me. And it makes me not trust the person. It's just natural. We all have natural things inside of us. There's natural knee-jerk reactions. And I have to work hard to actually trust that person. I really do. And so anyway, your boss, your coworkers, your manager has pet peeves. It'd be really wise for you to find out what those are. It would. Huge. Massive like enormous. That makes you a strategist. It makes you unstoppable because once you discover what those are, then you stay far away from those suckers. Let everyone else in the office do those. Those people are going to get fired eventually. They're eventually not going to get promoted. They eventually be stunted in their growth and not see any growth to the point where they will want to quit. And it's all by design (laughs) because there's some bosses that that's how they do it. They work the person out so they don't have to fire them. They they make it so that, okay, you're telling me you don't want to grow? That's, you're going to stay stuck in that rut. And some people can't handle being in a rut. And so they work themselves out. I pray people out. <laughs> That's my personal strategy. Of, you don't need to be here anymore. I'm praying your blood out of here. And God always seems to do the job. It's always amazing to me. Anyway, so it, it, you would be such a strategist if you go in tomorrow or today, right? You're heading into work right now. Head and go, what are your pet peeves? Ask the people that are around you what their personal pet peeves are and strategically go in the opposite direction of those pet peeves and say, and what delights you in, in an employee or a coworker? Here's why. You're like, why do I need to do that with my coworkers? Come on, friend, listen to me. 
Because your coworkers actually determine whether or not you get promoted. They do. Because if people don't like working with you, your coworkers don't like working with you, you can't be promoted into management. Nope. Not possible. But if you have a really good working relationship and you're team oriented, okay? There was somebody recently um, that was in our office and it was discovered and, and it was sad because the individual did not know that he would do a certain activity that was a pet peeve for the whole team, but he had no idea because no one ever said anything, which was wrong on the management's part. The management should have said something. But here this young man, he, when someone asked him a question, he would say, I don't know. I don't know. But see, he was the person that was supposed to know. And so his way of like, say, you know, get away from me. I'm overwhelmed. I got so much that I got to do. His answer was, I don't know. Nope, you can't do that. No, no. And that was it. And so he was literally provoking anger from people. No one manifesting into anger, but like internally, like Wah! people were stewing because he kept getting this answer. And when he found out that that was like really ticking people off and it wasn't playing team, he's like, oh man, that's terrible. He had no idea. He had no idea. So when he saw it from the other person's perspective, he was like, gosh, I've exasperated some people. This is terrible. And so he's made an effort to make those things right, which is awesome leadership. And so it's really important to, yes, discover. Why? Because when someone is about to be, when, when, when there's a, a new opportunity for a promotion, the management looks at how everyone else works with that person. And if, if you don't have a relationship with your coworkers, you can't lead those coworkers. So that's why you've got to find out what are the pet peeves of those I work with? Because it's a team. A company is a team. A family is a team. And if you find out what those are, strategically stay away from them. Work in the opposite direction and find out what the things are that really bless that person. Now you're going to have a whole company rallying around you being promoted. All right, so we're going back to the phones, uh, finding out what your, and again, this is important, find out what your weaknesses are. Find out what the weaknesses are that are hurting you from being promoted. Because if you're not getting promoted, I promise you it's something you're doing. You got to stop thinking, oh, it's because of someone else. Sorry, buddy. Janet from Tennessee, welcome to the show. Hello, Danny. So what about you? Bad habits or things that you've changed in the past that have helped? Well, let's just say uh, four and a half years of dynasty and, and first steps to success has really made a difference in my life. And uh, one of my biggest uh, things I like to say is when I listen to people, I always say, in my mind, I don't want to say things out loud. Out of the uh, well springs of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. So a lot of times I'll just, you know, I'll, you know, now that I've made a, a change in my employment, um, it's really worked well here. Mm -hmm. Because I love to see the good in people. And I like to distance myself from drama by not speaking. And if I do speak, I try to just bring in a little bit of positive about the person. And um, well, I don't know. That's me. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. And so sometimes changing your environment and moving around and getting around other people and obviously improving yourself. You've been to several training seminars for the last four and a half years. Those, those are things that help you to grow. And as you grow, you can grow your income. We've got Anna... Sorry, Annette Flute from Ontario. Welcome to the show. Yes. Yes, it's me, Annette. How are you, Danny? Very good, thanks. Um, yeah, um, my comment was about, uh, I had an employer once that was, uh, said I was trying too hard, so I thought that was odd. <laughs> but, no, um, it's very real. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But anyway, I thought to myself, gee whiz, I was trying my best. But anyway... Um, Hold on one second, Annette. Me. Let me. I want to address this because th this is a misnomer. When someone says that you're trying too hard, looking back, what did trying too hard look like? I don't know. I just. It's striving. Yeah. It's stress. It's pressure. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yes. When someone is trying too hard, they are pushing their timeline, their agenda and pushing for it to be done the way they think it should be done. And so whenever a job is being done with stress and striving and pressure, that person is trying too hard versus finding the flow and bringing peace into the environment and trust into the environment and healthy communication in the environment. That's someone who knows that they know that it's going to succeed. 
no matter what. Hmm. Well, I was just following what she was doing. Yeah, trying too hard. <laughs> yeah, so in other words, she was trying too hard. Well, Annette, I wouldn't deflect it on her. She gave no, no, some... no, I'm just saying that I was just following my example, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she was picky. So I thought, okay, maybe i got to be picky too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's not my fault. I take right. full responsibility for that. Yeah. Um, in, in, in fact, some of the things that you're saying already, I do recognize in myself my faults, and right. I know that I have to change them, but yeah. I don't know how to do that. And one of the things that you're talking about is, is conflict, right? Yep. Uh, and so in my comment as well, um, I was working with someone in the same workplace that didn't want to do certain jobs. Yep. And so my point was, I thought to myself, okay, normally I would let someone walk all over me because I'm a, yeah, kind of a no. pleaser. So yeah. that was something I always did. Yeah, and that's so, something that you have to fix because what you do is you create a codependent work environment. And codependency in any environment is toxic. So we can't allow people to walk on us, but we have to learn good communication skills to confront issues. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. I'm so blessed that I found what is in Grooming the Next Generation for Success. This is a book that is being taught in universities around the world. It's been noted as the best book on parenting that has ever been written. Crazy, if you ask me. But the point is that this thing gets results. Get your copy today, 888-757-8880. Again, that's 888-757-8880. Or go to dannyjohnson.com. That's D-A-N-I johnson.com. Get your copy today. For families in Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, life is filled with fear and struggle. They don't have enough food for their kids, clean water is hard to find, and they're living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel on top of mining tunnels that could explode and sink at any moment. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming this village. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha to see how you can help. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org, and click on Santa Pancha. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. So there you have it. When we started today's program, I told you that you were going to be set up to perhaps get yourself a raise or a promotion. Um, I think we delivered. A lot was talked about today that shows why we don't get promoted and things that we can change. We gave you some amazing strategies of things that you can do so that you can make yourself more valuable in the marketplace. And one of those things that we from our last caller, Annette, is taking full responsibility. Do not deflect. Don't even look at the leader and go, well, they, you know, they did it that way, so I did it that way. Take full responsibility for your own personal actions so that you can make the appropriate changes. In fact, I loved what Annette said. She's like, I know I've got some bad habits and and you've pointed those out today in today's show, but how do I fix them? Taking full responsibility. Full. That means not even looking at somebody else's example, but full responsibility, number one. Number two, going to the person that you didn't take full responsibility with in the beginning and asking for forgiveness. Number three, asking for accountability. Okay, so let's say that you've been procrastinating, all right? And so it is not blaming why you're procrastinating. Okay, let's just get settled down to being real. Okay, I procrastinated, I screwed this up, and I am wrong. And you go and apologize. Please forgive me, for I have wronged you, I've dishonored you, I've disrespected you, I've come up with lame excuses, and it's all wrong. And I ask you hold me accountable. And the next time I procrastinate, the next time I defend myself, the next time I deflect, the next time I argue, I want you to call me out on it immediately because I do not want to stay stuck where I'm at at this point in my life. And these are major issues that I am working towards and I need you and I give you full permission to call me out on it. I hope it can be done in honor and respect, but if I've pushed you too far and you got to scream at me, scream at me because I have to fix this. This is terrible. I'm too old to be acting like this. I'm too old to be working like this and I got to fix this. So, That's it. Simple. Take responsibility, apologize, and ask for forgiveness, and then ask that person to hold you accountable. Now you got a nice little tightrope around you. You got a short leash, if you will, and now you've got to do what is right. 
So I hope that today helped you tremendously. And there's one last thing that I want to talk to you about, and I end every program with it. Let's do good today. Let's do something profound and of great purpose. Let's not just work today to make money for ourselves that we're just going to spend foolishly. Let's take $1 out of every 10 that we make, and let's go build a 1,000 homes together for the extreme poor, meaning no water. They have no shelter. They have no food. We're talking extreme poor. That kind of poverty is not in the United States of America, but just right right real close to us, there is a country that has such extreme poverty that people are dying because of the poverty. And you and I can make such a big difference by putting purpose to money. And we can build them homes, we can build communities, we can bring education, and we can bring businesses and teach them how to run them. Go to kingsransom.org if you'd like to learn how to do that now. kingsransom.org. And I ask you, do it forever, like monthly, do it weekly, every dollar, for every dollar that you make, 10 cents goes to helping someone who's in extreme need. Kingsransom.org. Again, that's kingsransom.org. I hope that you enjoyed our time. I certainly enjoy talking to you, and I hope that you apply any one of the things that you got to hear today, whether it's from one of our callers or from the from myself. Use it, apply it, and I want to hear about your next promotion. God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're gonna make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.